Um, hi everyone, I'm Aziza, final year PhD student at Manchester Metropolitan University, and my talk today will be focusing on the use of still being analog encapsulated liposomes to restore attenuated beta dilating responses of coronary vessels in an acute hypertensive environment. Did you know that one in four people watching this presentation are likely to have hypertension? Um, simply put, hypertension is a common disorder in which blood pressure remains normally high and it accounts for more than 10 million deaths each year. And now the problem is that the current antihypertensive medications that are available on the market do not effectively restore blood pressure. So there is the urgent need to evaluate other therapeutic approaches to manage this disease. So hypertension is a significant risk factor for the development of cardiovascular disease. And one marker, one early marker is endothelial dysfunction, which is um, a pathological condition of the inner endothelial lining of the vessels. And it's primarily characterized by an oxidative environment and reduced dilator capacity. So Increased levels of reactive oxygen species quench nitric oxide, which is a potent um, dilator in vessels, and this inhibits vessel relaxation. So in hypertension, you've got this um, increased constriction, and so you've got this imbalance between beta constrictors and beta dilators, and this is partly due to the removal of nitric oxide's inhibition of potent beta constrictors, such as 20-HECE, is a cytochrome P450 eucasinoid that has been shown to contribute to the development of hypertension. So in hypertension, um, elevated intravascular pressure um, leads to the activation of the key enzyme CYP1B1, and this generates the potent beta constrictor 20-HECE, um, leading to, through signal transduction mechanisms, it leads to the activation of the enzyme NADPH oxidase, which then leads to um, reactive oxygen species production, leading to quenching of nitric oxide. Um, the good news is that it's possible to inhibit the CYP1B1 enzyme using um, a potent analog of res the antioxidant resveratrol, known as TMS, tetramethoxystilbene, and evidence suggests that it can also stimulate nitric oxide production by activating um, up, upstream targets in PK and CERT1. But there's a catch. So the limitation with um, the use of TMS for therapeutic application is its low bioavailability and short half-life. So we've decided to look at liposomes as TMS carriers because um, they're biocompatible and they, they're being recognized as promising drug delivery modalities and because of the ability to also cause physiological barriers. So the aim of my project was to assess whether these CMS loaded liposomes can restore the attenuated dilated responses following acute pressure elevation in isolated coronary arteries in an ex vivo model of hypertension. And we hypothesized that these CMS liposomes will have the capacity to um, restore the vasodilated responses following this acute pressure elevation. So um, three types of liposomes were synthesized using the thin lipid film process, blank liposomes, TMS liposomes, and TMS dilated liposomes. And we use a range of chemical techniques to characterize them. So we first used, um, in graph A, we used fluorescent spectroscopy to confirm the presence of the carboxyfluorescent dye. And then we also used UVVIS in graph B to confirm entrapment of the TMS within the liposomes, and FTIR in graph C and D to confirm the molecular fingerprint of TMS and the constituents that we use to synthesize um, the liposomes. So the next thing we did was we assessed the effect of our TMS loaded liposomes on function of isolated coronary arteries from the rack using our ex vivo model of hypertension. So the vessel is first dissected and the fat surrounding fat tissue is gently taken off and we then um, Sorry, we then mount it between two fine um, glass can two glass cannulae in a pressure myograph. And the first thing we do is we equilibrate the vessel at a normal pressure of 60 milligrams per mercury. And then um, we elevate and viability is checked. So once the vessel is viable, we then elevate pressure for one hour. 
uh, after which we bring back, bring the pressure back down to 60 milligrams per mercury and incubate with TMS liposomes in the presence or absence of inhibitors for 30 minutes. Then we constrict the vessel using um, serotonin. So when you, we constrict the vessel, obviously the vessel gets narrower. So you've got a reduction in diameter after which we um, add cumulative doses of um, the dilator agonist acetylcholine and you get um, relaxation. We then leave the vessel in physiological saline solution for a further four hours and test sustained dilator responses again to the, the dilator agonist acetylcholine. So as you can see in this, sorry, as you can see, sorry, yeah. as you can see in this video, um, the diameter of the vessel is tracked as it constricts and relaxes in response to various agonists. So the vessel gets narrower as it constricts and widens as it dilates. And so the blood vessel diameter is tracked as a function of drug concentration and pressure using a video dimension analyzer. Okay, so the first objective of this study was to characterize our acute model of hypertension. So this first graph um, shows the change in percentage dilation to cumulative doses of the endothelial dependent agonist acetylcholine. And as shown in the orange line, elevated pressure significantly um, attenuated dilator responses, which was potentiated when the vessel was incubated in apocyanin, which is an inhibitor of NADPH oxidase enzyme and the antioxidant. Um, and it also, SOD, superoxide disputase also potentiated the dilator response. So these results confirm the role of reactive oxygen species in the reduction in dilation in our acute model of hypertension. So the important question we had was, will these CMS loader liposomes uh, potentiate the dilator responses in this oxidative environment and therefore provide a protective mechanism against rust? So as shown in the black and green lines in graph B, um, which is TMS liposomes and TMS solution, um, we get this potentiation and dilation with um, both liposome formulations and solution. Um, however, after four hours, <clears throat> sorry, after four hours, TMS liposomes demonstrated better efficacy than TMS solution alone. And we would expect this because of the continued release, slow continued release of the TMS from the liposomes, as well as the protective layer that the liposomes provide against um, TMS degradation. So TMS liposomes can restore the dilator capacity um, after pressure elevation with better efficacy compared to TMS solution alone. So there are several pathways that can lead to dilation. You've got ENOS, pathway leading to, activa uh, leading to um, nitric oxide production. You've got EDHF, endothelial dependent hyperpolarizing factors. You've got COX. So the next thing we wanted to do was to characterize the dilator component that these TMS liposomes are acting via <clears throat> or are potentiating. And we use pharmacological inhibitors of these different pathways. So in this first graph, we um, inhibited nitric oxide production using LNNA. And what we found was there was, there was a significant reduction in the dilator capacity of the TMS liposomes, suggesting that these TMS liposomes are potentiating the nitric oxide pathway. On the other hand, when we inhibited quarks using endomethacin, there was no um, change in dilation. So TMS liposomes are not acting via this pathway. And in this third graph, although the inhibition of endothelial derived hyperpolarization using Apermin and Tram is pre preliminary results with an N of two, there seems to be a reduction in dilation as shown in the red line, but we're yet to increase N numbers to confirm um, this observation. So TMS liposomes potentiate vasodilator responses via release of nitric oxide, and there might be a potential role for EDHF. So now that we've established or we found that these TMS liposomes are um, potentiating the nitric oxide pathway, we then wanted to dissect out the mechanism for the potentiation of this nitric oxide. So we explored this by looking at inhibitors of two key enzymes, AMPK and CERT1. And this is because polyphenols are um, known to be CERT1 activators, leading to um, enos deacetylation. Um, leading to ENOS activation and nitric oxide production. But there's also a feedback loop between CERT1 and AMPK where CERT1 activates AMPK and vice versa. 
But interestingly, our results showed a bigger role for AMPK rather than CERT1. And this is because when we inhibited AMPK using dosimorphin, and as shown in the green line, we saw a significant um, reduction in dilator responses. However, inhibition of CERT1 using EX527, shown in the red line, had no effect on dilator responses. And these are, these are similar to the results we found in aortic vessels. Um, so TMS liposomes seem to be acting via AMPK and nitric oxide in coronary vessels and in aortic vessels. So in conclusion, TMS liposomes can restore their attenuated coronary endothelial dependent dilator responses in an acute hypertensive environment via potentiation of AMPK and release of nitric oxide. And our findings will have um, important implications for the future implementation of TMS liposomes as a valid therapeutic um, strategy to help restore vasodilator function in hypertension. A massive thank you to my supervisor, Dr. Niazawi, and co-supervisors, as well as our collaborators, Dr. Linda Harris from the University of Manchester. They helped synthesize the liposomes. And I'm also pleased to be supporting the BSNM Society as a champion for the Manchester area. So please do get in touch via my email, Twitter, or LinkedIn account. Thank you. Thank you, Azia. Um, yes, a really interesting talk. And yeah, it's great to see the kind of effect these your systems are having. Um, I, I, I was interested in um, whether you see enhanced accumulation of the TMS um in the in the in the cells in the vessels um because you obviously saw this extended profile of drug release or extended action it, it, what do you think is driving that so we have um tried to image these tms liposomes in the vessels but we because of the issues we had with the background autofluorescence it's not been possible to it's not been clear to actually image them in vessels so the next thing we're going to do is try and image them in cells coronary and human coronary endothelial cells to see where exactly, you know, the localization, their, their concentrations are in the cells, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because you saw, if I, if I remember rightly, you saw very similar behavior of the TMS solution versus the liposomes, but then at an extended time period, there's still the effect, wasn't it? So the, the, there's got to be some... There was an effect with the TMS liposomes, yeah. Possibly, again, after four hours, the TMS solutions are, you know, prone to degradation. They're also light sensitive, to, so in some extent, you can get like breakdown of the of the drug as compared to being protected in the liposomes. Yeah. Okay, we've got a couple of other questions come in. Um, yeah, what was the encapsulation efficiency and what, what characterization have you done of your liposomes? So the liposomes were actually um, produced by our collaborators, but we've characterized, we, we've characterized them, the, the character, characterization that I've showed earlier, we've also measured zeta potential so they've got a zeta they're quite stable in solution. We've also measured their size. We're yet to do um, uh, in vivo by distribution and by compatibility studies in the near future to add more to that characterization. Okay, okay, and yeah, yeah, and we've had a couple of questions on this general theme. Is kind of what what are you going to do in terms of translation to in vivo, um, and what, what challenges you see in that space? So we've just got ethical approval to. Um, have access to human tissue from patients that have undergone cabbage surgery. So, we'll, so the next step is to sort of see, um, assess whether these CMS liposomes are effective in, you know, improving visualizer function in, in in actual patients. So that's going to be the first step, and hopefully, you know, in the long term, these CMS liposomes could be injected into patients and offer them that protective um, effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, we, we've got another another question come up, but I think in the interest of time, if you could answer that in the in the Q and A section, that would be fantastic. Okay. So, thanks, and we'll look forward to seeing how how we put your work progresses in that area. Yeah.